Welcome to Code Legends. If you're enjoying the content, please support the channel by subscribing and liking the video. Now, let's get started. Hey everyone, and welcome back. In this video, we're going to get started with installing all the necessary tools to work with React Native CLI. Before we begin, it's important to note that installation process may change over time as React Native releases newer versions. I always try to update these videos. However, it is best to refer to the official documentation for most up-to-date instructions. If this video differs from the documentation, always follow the documentation as your primary resource and I'm going to place the link to it in the resources folder with this video. And today we're going to be focusing on setting up the CLI environment for iOS development. It is recommended to have around 10 gigabytes of free space, particularly for this video. However, in general, you're going to need around 30 gigabytes of free space to make sure that you have some room for Android later as well. And other than that, make sure that you are running latest macOS version for smooth installation. If your macOS is not the latest, you might face issues because of the latest React Native releases. While I believe this video will guide you through the process without any issues, it's worth mentioning that everyone's computer usage can be different. If you have prior development experience or have already installed some tools for Expo, Flutter, or React Native, please note that there might be some clashes. We're not going to be using Expo in this course and we already went through the reasons of why in the previous videos. If you still want to use Expo, you can always get a refund and choose the course that best fits your needs. If you encounter any issues during the installation, you can always ask your questions in the Q&A section below. Now let's jump right into the documentation and find out how to get macOS ready for iOS development. Now, as the first thing, we're going to open our browsers and we're going to go to the React Native's official documentation, which can be found on reactnative.dev. And here we're going to go under the guides tab right here and then go to environment setup click on set up your environment and you're going to see the instructions right here. We can see that development OS is already set to Mac OS and the target OS is iOS. This is exactly what we need. And today we're going to be installing all these dependencies to get our React Native project running. So for this, we're going to need a terminal. And if you've never used a terminal on your Mac OS, just click on command space and then type in terminal and it should pop up right here. Make sure to put it in your taskbar right here because we're gonna be using it a lot. What we're gonna do now is install the first tool that we're going to use for installing the Node and Watchman right here, which is Homebrew. So let's click on this link and you're going to be redirected here. Here, all you need to do is just copy this command, go to your terminal and paste it and click on enter. Now you're going to need to type in your password. And while you're typing this, you might not see the letters appear, but that's totally fine. You're still typing. So just enter your password here. Great. And now click on enter. Meanwhile, I'm going to tell you a bit about Homebrew. So Homebrew is a package manager for Mac OS that allows you to easily install and manage various software packages. It simplifies the process of installing the tools that we need, such as this node and watchman and some other dependencies required for React Native CLI. So once yours is installed as well, you can come back to this video and continue watching it so that we can get into the installation of other tools that we're going to use for React Native. Great. Now that this is installed, we're given next steps to finish the installation process. You can see it right here. Please do not skip this. This is super important. If you disregard this, your environment is not going to be working correctly. So all you need to do for this is just select all of these lines and then copy it, paste it here, click enter, and that's all. Your homebrew should be set up right now. If you want to check that it's set up correctly, you can run brew dash v this will output the homebrew version we're currently running on the latest version this might look different for you so the homebrew installation is now complete we can close this window 
and go to the next steps. The next thing that we're going to do is actually get the node installed. So you can just select this and paste it here and click on run and this should begin the node installation. And while this is running, let me tell you a bit about Node. Node is JavaScript runtime built on Chrome's JavaScript engine. It allows you to execute JavaScript code outside of our browser, making it essential for running React Native CLI as React Native is dependent on JavaScript. Node provides the necessary environments to build, test, and run your React Native applications. Now this is already installed for me and the next step is to get the watchman set up. So for that, we're gonna need to copy this command. We're gonna copy it, we're gonna paste it here and we're gonna let this run and you guessed it right. Now I'm gonna talk about watchman. Watchman is a tool developed by Facebook, now known as Meta, that watches your files in your React Native projects and triggers actions when they change. It plays a crucial role in monitoring file changes and efficiently updating the app while you're working on it. It significantly speeds up the development process by automating repetitive tasks. It tracks what changes you make to your application while you have your simulators up and running and makes sure that the updates to your project are reflected in the simulator. So you don't actually have to rerun your project and rebuild it every time you make the changes. When you save your files, it will automatically appear in the simulator. So Watchman significantly will improve the time you need to spend for development. And that's why it's great. So since this is already done, we can just download the Xcode. Right now, you can just go to your App Store. You can search for Xcode here. You're gonna click on download and Xcode is Apple's Integrated Development Environment, or IDE. It provides a comprehensive set of tools, including a code editor, debugger, and simulator. Simulator is necessary for iOS app development because you're going to need to run and test your applications created with React Native inside there. Great, so now our Xcode has been installed and we can just open it. It's going to start up and we're going to agree to the terms and conditions. You might need to enter your password. And we see that we have macOS selected by default, but we also need the iOS simulator. So make sure to check this and then click on download and install. This might take a second. So come back to the video once it's done. Great, my simulators have been set up and my Xcode popped up right here. I'm going to click on continue here. And you see that my Xcode was installed successfully. There's just one more thing that you need to make sure of here. Please go to your Xcode and then select settings. And here you should be able to find the locations tab. Please click on that. And you're gonna find command line tools here. You see that it seems as if this is selected, but below it says that it's not selected. It says no Xcode selected. We need to make sure that this is selected. So. You will need to click here one more time and just make sure that this appears as selected. So let me enter my password. And now if you see something like this, you're all good to go. So Xcode has been installed. And one last thing that we need to install is CocoaPods. We see it here, CocoaPods is dependent on Ruby. Ruby comes with macOS. Um, everyone might have different versions running on their system. To check your version, you can just run ruby-v in your terminal. For example, I'm running on 2.6.10, which is totally fine. And to install CocoaPods, we're going to need to use a brew command. You can just do brew install CocoaPods and then click on enter. So let's talk about what CocoaPods is. It's a dependency manager for Swift or Objective-C that is used when creating iOS applications only using Xcode. So in React Native development, CocoaPods is used to integrate third-party libraries and dependencies in your iOS applications. 
If you don't know what dependencies are and what third-party libraries are, you will get to know to it during this course, so no worries. But just to give you an idea, it simplifies the process of adding, updating, and managing these dependencies created by other people and other developers that you can use for your own applications, saving you time and effort to create different features. So the CocoaPods is installed. And if you want to check that it's working fine, you can do pod two dashes and then version. And this outputs 1.16.2 for me. It might output something different for you. That's totally fine. But as long as it outputs something, it means that installation was successful. Now, that's all we needed to do to create our first React Native project. So let's just get started and create our first project. You can clear your terminal using the clear command. Great, so now we're going to create our first project. And for that, we're going to go to the desktop because that's where I always place my projects. CD here, by the way, stands for change directory. And then we're gonna do what you need to do every time when you want to create new projects with React Native. So do npx at react native community slash CLI. This will connect you to react native CLI. And then do init, that stands for initialize. And then we're going to follow it up with the project name. I'm going to call this project awesome project. And let's click on enter. At this point, you might be asked whether you want to proceed or not. If so, just click on Y on your keyboard and then enter. And that should pop up this huge React Native logo that you see inside the terminal. It will start downloading the template, installing all the dependencies for you. After that, it will ask you whether you want to install CocoaPods as well. And for that, we're going to answer with yes. And you're going to need to click on Y on your keyboard. And it should proceed with the CocoaPods installation, as I just did right now. And then once this is done, everything should be successful. Now, I might cut out this part later on, but you might face some issues with React Native 76.6 exactly. They're working on the fixed version, and they're going to upload it soon. So you might not see these issues come up anymore. If you don't see anything and everything was successful and you do not see any errors, just skip over the parts that I'm going to say you should skip over. And if you do see the errors, just follow me. So to resolve this issue, the first thing that we're going to do is go to Awesome Project and then go to the gem file here. And we're going to add one more line. It's going to say gem and then concurrent Ruby and then comma. And we're going to do 1.3.4. We're going to save this. So you don't need these changes if everything's successful, but otherwise you do. Save this. We don't need the project opened anymore. And then we're currently in the desktop. So we need to go to our projects. This is something that everyone has to do. So let's change our directory and go to the awesome project. And now that we're inside the root here, if you did see the issues because we updated our gem file, we need to run npx pod install, and this will reinstall your CocoaPods. If you didn't see the issue, then you don't need to run this, and you can join us in the next step when we're going to be running our iOS project inside the simulator. So for now, let's click on Enter and just wait for this to complete. It might take a while and come back to the video once that's done. Great, so this is done now. And now we're going to enter a command here that you're going to use every time you want to run your already set up project. So we set up the awesome project. Now we want to run it on the iOS simulator. And for that, we're going to use npx react native run dash iOS. And by the way, these commands have also been given here. It says that you need to change your directory if you want to run the application for iOS and then run your application with this command. So that's what we're doing right now. Let's click on enter and this will open up 
a Metro Bundler. And I do want to talk about what Metro Bundler is exactly. So Metro Bundler will open up anytime you're going to be running your application. This is going to be needed to be opened and kept open anytime you're making changes to your application. Even when building the app, automatically your files are changing inside your project, or even if you're changing them yourself, Metro Bundler is what keeps track of the file changes that's occurring in your project and it makes sure that those file changes are communicated to the simulator. So if you're actually working on your project and you're changing the files or you're building your application, please make sure that at all times your Metro Bundler is open and it's not closed down. And if you want to stop the development for the day, you can close down your Metro Bundler and just open it one more time with MPX React Native run iOS command, or you could also use a, another command that is npm start inside of the root of your project. So you have two choices to start up the Metro Bundler. Technically, it should automatically start with MPX React Native run iOS, but if it doesn't, you can just run npm start in your directory and it should pop up. Now, if anyone is facing issues with Metro, you might have some issues with the setup of Watchman. So make sure that that's installed. And if you still are experiencing issues, check the Q&A section because there might already be someone who asked this question. But if you see what I see, you should be all set. Now wait for your application builds to be completed and come back to the video once that's done. The build would usually take longer for the first time when you're running your application, but it won't be so long for the next time you're going to run. So just bear with the installation process for this first time and the next time should be way quicker. We can see that our app is bundling right now and it's about to pop up. This means that everything went successfully. Our Metro Bundler is getting all of the file changes. This will go to 100% and we're going to be able to see our application. Great, so here we go. We have our first template from React Native downloaded. So this is how it looks. You can scroll here. We have successfully completed all the steps. We have installed the latest React Native environment setup. And because we did everything so well, you're able to see this running in the simulator. Now, I do want to say that if you have any questions or run into any issues during the installation process, don't hesitate to ask your questions in the Q&A section. And don't forget to copy and paste the output from your terminal there, because that way I'm going to help you quicker. In the next video, we're going to install the Android emulator and get this running for Android as well. React Native is so good because you can create two different applications, Android and iOS with a single code base. So don't miss out on the opportunity on setting up the Android emulator because that's good to do before you start working on your own projects so that you don't run into any issues later when you actually want to launch your project on Android as well. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.